Hey, what's going on guys? Kevin the Tech Ninja here. And if you like technology videos from the smart home to the smartphone, make sure you hit subscribe right now. If you've been following me on social and on this channel, then you know that I made the switch to the iMac 2021 M1. I'm a desktop guy in general. I always like to have a dedicated work area. Sort of helps me with my mental, knowing that when I'm sitting here, I am actually working. And so that's the reason I picked up this iMac to sort of hold me over until we see what's coming from the pro line. Here are five things I found while using this computer as my everyday computer, and also five ways that I fix the problems that I found. Let's start off with number one. It has to be the ports on the iMac. The iMac I purchased has two Thunderbolt 4 ports and two USB-C ports. The entry-level iMac only has two Thunderbolt ports. For some people, that may not be a big deal, that may be all they need, but for other people like me, maybe like you, you need more ports. Or for people who may be upgrading from a previous iMac or coming from a different type of computer, they may have had the old school USB ports and not USB-C. So some of their old things like a flash drive or anything like that, they still may need old ports. So the fix that I have is actually getting a USB-C hub. Now the USB-C hub I personally have has USB ports and it also has an SD card slot too. So if I need to plug in a memory card for my camera, I can do it right here. I also used Velcro tape and just pretty much taped it on the back of the iMac. So I still have this really clean appearance from the front and you don't see any of the stuff going on in the back. Number two, I don't think the peripherals out of the box are good at all. So let's start with the keyboard. I think it's flimsy and I feel very cramped when using it. The keyboard also doesn't have great travel when typing on it. So it leads to me having a lot of mistyping by missing keys or fat fingering keys. It's just, it's just not a good experience at all for me. And also not having a 10 key on a desktop. Now I will give them credit, Touch ID on the keyboard is really convenient when you're making purchases or logging into your computer or authenticating passwords. I really like Touch ID and I'm a big fan of it being right here on the keyboard. And then we gotta talk about that magic mouse, man. I don't know one person that likes the magic mouse. Mouse. You know, many people would just purchase the trackpad and call it a day, but I like having a mouse and it's just a bummer that the Magic Mouse has not seen a upgrade since I purchased one before and just was totally unhappy with it. And it also has that very uh, unique way of charging it where you flip it upside down and plug it in, which um, yeah, it seems like Apple would have redesigned that by now, but they have not. So with that being said, obviously a mouse and keyboard is something you can buy and just use. Well, this takes us to number three. My Logitech mouse is made for Mac and it doesn't work well over Bluetooth. Now look at on Reddit and asking my friends, <clears throat> Dan, it, it looks like a lot of Bluetooth devices still has issues with the M1. I found myself having issues where I move the mouse and it wouldn't wake the computer up. Then the mouse buttons wouldn't register clicks and then the mouse just stopped working at all. And I had to turn my computer off and turn it back on and get the mouse working or turn the mouse off and turn it back on. It was never a linear solution and it's something that happened three or four times during the day. So it seems like there's just an issue with Bluetooth communicating with devices that may not have the firmware for M1. I'm not particularly sure on that, but if you buy the $10 unifying adapter or if you have one laying around because some Logitech stuff comes with one, then you just plug that in and then your mouse connects directly to that. And it's no longer using Bluetooth, I believe it's using 2.4 gigahertz. And so with that being said, it actually works a whole lot better. I haven't had one crash since I made the switch. And since you took my suggestion already, you got yourself a hub, then you don't have an issue with it because the unifying adapter is not USB-C, it's just the standard legacy USB. And the same stuff I said actually goes for the keyboard too, but there isn't a unifying adapter for my keyboard. I'm using a Keychron K4, which is compatible with Mac, but once again, it may not be compatible with M1 as this keyboard is about eight months old now. So maybe the next version of the keyboard will work better or they'll hand out a firmware. I reached out for a comment from Keychron and I didn't get anything back yet, but I will keep you posted on that. So the next problem, which I sort of touched on a little bit is software. So the M1 processor does a great job at making software compatible. And, and like I said, a lot of software that today that you'll get on your, your Mac or your download will be running in Rosetta emulation mode. And Rosetta works for the most part, but some features may not work or it may just be buggy. 
So for example, my Spotify, either the music just starts skipping or the app stops working or it crashes my whole computer. So what I actually started doing was going through Safari and launching Spotify through the web version. So what that's doing is using Safari instead of using its own non-compatible app. And since I'd made that change, haven't had an issue at all. So if you have any apps that has a web-based version of it and you're having issues, make sure you just use the web-based version of it for now and see if that resolves that issue. Kind of another one, which I was very aware of, a lot of my plugins that I use to make these videos are not compatible with M1. So I'm actually using a launcher that forces Final Cut into Rosetta mode, and you don't get those crazy good performance numbers that you're seeing in benchmarks, but you are able to use those older plugins. What I typically do is pretty much make the whole video in uh, Final Cut on the M1, and then I launch it in Rosetta to apply my plugins on top of that. I'm gonna leave the, uh, the launcher down below so you can launch Final Cut in Rosetta mode and uh, use all of your old legacy plugins. And then we have a bonus one. If you don't like the way the iMac looks, you can obviously switch it up from my sponsor, Dbrand. You know, a lot of people don't like the white bezels around it. It's starting to grow on me and I, I think where I sit, it looks good. But if you don't want it to look like that and you want to black it out, my people at Dbrand can hook it up for you right now. So this is currently on pre-order, but if you know anything about Dbrand, they make the most precise vinyl skins available. You can make your iMac look however you want. You can have a totally unique look from the front and from the back. Hit the links down below to Dbrand your device. Anyways guys, those were my thoughts. Those were my five problems that I've had with my iMac and how to fix them. Kevin the Tech Ninja here, have a great night. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.